San Francisco long ago I made my living hooking on Polk Street and the old black rose my eye was always looking for some dumb man to pay my rent and some young man to love me with so many heaven said I thank the stars above me sticks and stones can break my bones but names can never hurt me the queens and the hustlers of the red light zones never did desert me the scent of men and prospectors they drift up from the grub stake where I shared so many cheeseburgers with my hustler Good evening. Um, I'm George Bracy, and this is Trans World. This is Trans World. 
and I have a special guest today. And before I start uh, 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 with the introduction, I would like to uh, say one thing. Had it not been for uh, my transitioning, not gender specifically speaking, but just the, through, through the intercourse interactions of my um, becoming acquaintance with um, an individual woman, which, which her name is um, Idell Wilson. Had it not been for that, for that woman and the intersect, intersectings of our lives and, and uh, my um, becoming acquainted with her and being invited to her show called uh, Black Diva Media, I wouldn't be here today. So I want to give a special thanks and appreciation to Idell Wilson upon whose shoulders and experience I'm standing on. So with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce my guest. And Hi, I'm Michael Thomas Angelo. Thank you, George. It's very nice to be here. Because my guest is, is unfamiliar with the protocol, it seems like I'm going to have to do um, some kind of uh, intervention education. So Michael, tell us why are you here and what is the issues that you're particularly passionate about? Oh, well, I thank you for having me here. I wanted to talk. Um, I wanted to specifically to talk about the tenderloin and with all the changes going on, and specifically the history. Um, I'm very passionate about fostering the awareness of the tenderloin's rich history, especially the gay history. Well, speak. You have an hour. It's your show. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's great. Wow. Thank you. Well, as we all know, the um, tenderloin in Mid Market have been changing very rapidly. It, started with the um, 2011 tax, tax breaks with Twitter, of course, that when they moved into the Furniture Mart, and there's just been a bevy, a hotbed of, act of activity in the area ever since. And so I've been, um, I'd like to, I just, I've just been, uh, I'd like to speak out about it. Last, not last evening, but first, I just want to shout out to, um, last evening, I got a ride from Homobiles, and she's like, I just have to give a shout out. They are such a, you, do you know about Homobiles? They're such a great organization, really. I mean, with their Uber, but for, it's like what Uber does, but for people like us, like, you know, with, with for the gay community. And it's um, Lynn Breedlove, who I had the pleasure of working with back in 1998 uh, to when she was, um, when she had the bicy bicycle messenger, she used to she used to have bicycle messengers um, called Lickety Split. She was as, as well as being a uh, rock star with Tribe Eight and and a writer and all sorts of. And she's just a wonderful individual. Anyway, I um, had the pleasure of working with her back then, and now she's doing this this um, homobiles, which she it's a car service basically. <laughs> they have a saying: "Ho is getting it's." I, it's, it's really cute, but anyway, she, um, they picked me up last night. I had to, to go somewhere very late in the evening, and I um, had such a great conversation with, with the driver. Uh, we, were talking about, we were talking about the um, changes going on in the Tenderloin and all the bars that were closing. <laughs> all the bars that have closed, actually, all the gay bars that have closed this year, or within the past year, and it's just like we, we rattled off about five of them. You know, it, and we were just remarking on it. Um, Terry, the driver, um, has been in San Francisco longer than I have. I've been in San Francisco almost 18 years. And so we were just marveling at the changes that we've seen. Just in so let's speak to some of these changes that you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Well, there's been like uh, at least five, like I said, five gay bars that have closed just this in the past year. Esther Noche being one of them, the Lexington truck, um, Marlena's. You know, there's a, there's a couple more that I just couldn't believe that they all just happened so quickly. I mean, these were institutional bars, you know, and all of a sudden now they're saying, "Oh well, there's no need for that anymore. It's post-gay now. We don't really need the. We don't really have the need for for gay people to congregate." And uh, we were, I was remarking with this driver that that was a very personal 
it was a very important part of my social development coming out as gay in my 20s. You know, the bars were the only places that I really, well, not the only place, but I, one of the, one of the, you know, the best places we, to socialize, you know. And so now without that, without those avenues, where do, ki where do kids socialize? You know, where do they, where's the sense of community today? We were wondering how that is for kids coming out today. We were just remarking on that. It's a shame that San Francisco, formerly a gay mecca, now have there's no trace of that, you know. Okay, so uh, speaking of that, uh, the comparable differences uh, between the Castro and the Tenderloin uh, in terms of that uh, uh, capacity for mm -hmm. uh, uh, transgender-oriented people mm -hmm. Well, to congregate, um, what's the well, conceptions or misconceptions of that? Well, the mis well, I'm just sorry. The, the con perceptions of the Castro is it's always been considered a boys' town, from my experience. Right? It was it, it was it was kind of like the Johnny Come Lately, you know, of the, of the neighborhood bo of the uh, gay areas. In my opinion, it came out in the '70s, of course, with Harvey Milk's legacy. <laughs> which they milked to death, no, no pun intended. Anyway, um, the uh, actually first gay area was the Tenderloin before the Polk and, you know, obviously before the Castro. And not very few people know that, that Turk and Taylor, the very corner of Turk and Taylor was the vice-ridden area that is, well, still vice-ridden, but it was, um, it was the center of the, it was the center of all the activity, all the gay activity with all the, with a lot of clubs and bathhouses and, and, and transgender, you know, had a gay presence there, as we, as we all know. Of course, the um, thing on the, uh, everyone knows about, well, not everyone, but most people know now about the Compton's Cafeteria riot that took place in 1966. They're um, about to celebrate the 50th anniversary of that. Uh, Felicia Elizondo um, is, is on the, She's been instrumental. She was um, featured in that documentary, Screaming Queens, which came out in 2005, the Susan Stryker documentary. It's a well-known documentary. Um, she's been instrumental in you know, fostering awareness of that. I, I wanted to talk about the, the tour. It, you know, that's how I actually came, I, I met you through, through that. Through, through that. Um, last March, I was involved in kind of a grassroots effort to to do a tour in the a, a gay gay center tour in the Tenderloin, a gay a gay history tour, and we, we did. We had about it was me and um, Felicia Elizondo, the Screaming Queens, who um, who led it. It was mostly Felicia, but but I got <laughs> I got billing too. We had about fifteen people. It was it was successful, and I was at the time I was writing an um, an article um, about the experience for a magazine for. Um, and I, it, it, it never transpired just for one reason or, or another, but I had, I had brought some, some of the um, false starts just to, to read, um, to give you a sense of, to, of the, um, the well, effort. Well, read it. Well, these are just like rough drafts. As I said, I started over the article about 27 times, and I never really came to, it never really transpired, because the tour never really transpired, actually. It was just one time, and then that particular we just it just never transpired, but we're, we're I'm working on something else. Hopefully, it will it will transpire in another venue. But anyway, um, uh, what I had written was um, San Francisco's longtime association as a gay mecca is on the brink of extinction, as evidenced by the extent of extant queer establishments eradicated in, in 2014. In San Francisco, the Castro has long been heralded as the official gayborhood in a city etched into public consciousness as a gay mecca as multiple gay bars closed across the city in 2014 alone. That distinction has died. Still, the Castro has clung to the identification as a queer enclave as evidenced by the rainbow pride stripes painted in the crosswalks and adornments inlaid within the cement to prove to the neighborhood it's gay from the ground up. A Vox Populi interview recently conducted by a local pundit dressed in drag shoved a microphone into the faces of passersby and asked them what they associated with gay in San Francisco. Everyone said, Castro. Hearing that made my skin crawl, because I had lived downtown in an area typically denigrated and brushed off as a place to avoid. The tenderloin shoulders its bad reputation valiantly, despite the gross inaccuracies and stereotypes that fuel the rumor. It is true that the streets are rife with a cottage industry of contraband. Hopheads are hankering for a hookup, just as crackheads clamor to come up. 
The rainbow pride stripes have been painted into Castro crosswalks. Oh, yeah. Okay, then it just kind of trails off because this is a rough draft. But I wanted to bring attention to this 1964 Life magazine article. The reason San Francisco was thought of as a gay mecca that started basically in 1964 with this, um, this article that was written in Life magazine. It was, um, they, it was uh, San Francisco was identified as, as a gay mecca in that article. And the article was actually um, quite amusing, reading it in today's standards. It, it, it goes on, it says, um, it talks about the tenderloin. Here in, the, in San Francisco's tenderloin off Market Street, this is June 1964, this came out, are the bo bottom of the barrel bars, where outcasts and misfits of all kinds hang out. The bedraggled clientele includes dope pushers and users, male and female hustlers. Most of the customers have been busted or arrested at least once. Here one finds the stereotypes of effeminate males, the queens with orange coiffers, plucked eyebrows, silver nail polish, and lipstick. There may be a man or two in drag, a few lesbians, some gay prostitutes, drunks, and cheap con men. Well, if you ask me, that sounds like my kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was really, so funny the way that it was, um, it, it really, I said, I said, few can recall the 1964 issue of Life magazine that first introduced the idea of San Francisco as the gay capital of the world to the public. The story is rife with alarmist pr <laughs> predications of angst, proposing Freudian principles to explain and pathologize gays. I pish posh and decredited all as stereotypes prototypical of their time until my eyes perk up upon seeing the mention of my own neighborhood. <laughs> so that, I just thought it was really amusing that they talked about. Yeah, the well, you know, uh, 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 Comparable to uh, that uh, uh, article from 1964, mm -hmm. I think it still pretty much is the same. Yeah, it's nothing. Represents. Yeah. I'm telling you, I love it. But um, I just think it was, it was. They were obviously meaning, you know, they were trying to make it sound so horrible. But I think those are, those are my kind of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, every you know somebody has to demonize. Of somebody, course, right. You know, I so. know, yeah. But when I think of the Castro in comparison to the tenderloin, the tenderloin, uh, for what's left of it, what's left is of it? still welcoming. Yeah. The Castro, you know, yeah, they're yeah. not so welcoming anymore. Um, not that they ever was. Not that they ever were. No, yeah. no, you're right. At least not to everybody. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was a boys' town. It was just like West Hollywood, basically. I mean, as far as the, you know, there was the West Hollywood where I came out in my. That <laughs> Well, you did faggotry. You it was accused of that too. Yeah, well, I know West Hollywood, North Hollywood, the same. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you did uh, research on some of the historical landmarks at, 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 in the in the and, yeah. and, I, and I, as I do recall, you are presently living in one, I while the other one has met its death, which is the Bis uh, Hotel Bistro. The Bristol. Bristol. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's met its yeah. death. Every time, I'm really. It's it's remarkable. It, Every time, every once in a while, well, increasingly, people will find out that I live, I live at the Ambassador Hotel at 55 Mason, which is, it's just an institution. To, it's just, it's such a hotbed of history. And every once in a while, I'll have people come to my room or, or, or talk about the people that knew the Ambassador back in the day, and they'll just wax poetic about it, and they'll talk about how, oh my gosh, they say the trannies ran that hotel. And I was just like, oh my god! I just I love living in a place that had like you know that, that had it was a, it was a it was the well of course it was the worst hotel of course as far as the, you know but it had the best drugs the best you know it was like it was just like a lot of you know a lot of ne'er do wells and nasty well, things. Well, share some of the know, narrative that you came well, up with in your research. Well, what I've heard, you, you are anecdotal. considered the unofficial historian. Oh, thank of you. The Oh, well, thank you. You know, that's, that's, that's wonderful because there is a plaque on the outside of the Ambassador Hotel that was from part of the whole um, effort when they all, when the buildings, the older buildings in the Tenderloin got tax breaks to put a, a plaque. That was Randy Shaw's um, effort back before the museum. Anyway, they all have little quips and anecdotes about the historical, why it's historical. And, and what it says about the Ambassador is that it was... Um, well, first of all, it talks about Miriam DeFord, who was actually a feminist suffragist writer that lived there um, for 40 years. She lived in the, for 40 years. And back when she, um, she died in the, 19, in the 70s, but she had been there from the 30s through the 70s. And she was um, a feminist, you know, suffragist, and this is back in the early days. Um, when she was interviewed for a feminist uh, paper back in the 70s, 
they, they re-interviewed her in the hotel where she, you know, in, the, in her room with the ambassador. And they talked then about how, how, how bad the conditions were in the ambassador, like how, how there was a fire and the, there were people coming in and out. It was just like, they talked to then about how horrible the conditions were. I'm like, wow, that was 40 years ago. I mean, that was basically my whole lifetime, you know. I mean, and then it was bad back then. You know, I can imagine how, it, you know, I can, well, they used to call it the slam ambassador, I heard, you know, because of the, the you know, slam, you know, which I think is really funny. But anyway, I, I people, they, uh, you know, I just, I don't like to pathologize anything. And I, I think we, for what it was, even though it was the worst and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Every once in a while, you'll have people come and talk about how, you know, Oh, that was the best time. You know, like it really, uh, you know, maybe it's just in. The what was <laughs> some of the efforts that you did uh, that you well, uh, that you attempted uh, to have that history preserved, and came into came upon resistance? Well, <clears throat> I wanted to I wanted to honor that. I still I'm still want to honor that. I mean, I I had spoken to the managers. We've had several shifts in management. It's it's managed actually by TNDC um, since 2003. And, um, but I, I've lived there just a couple of years, but I wanted to basically just call attention to the, the, the ambassador's former life before, because I think now it's so, it's, it's basically, it's very utilitarian in there. It's, 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 it's a, it, you know, there's no, um, people are depressed there. I mean, it's just, you know, there's, it's a Tenderloin Hotel. It's an, you know, it's a SRO. It's an SRO. SRO. Yeah. So, but, you know, but, you know, there's that whole, there's the whole stigma and all that. And I thought, you know, this, I don't want anyone to feel bad about living in the ambassador because it, it's, it's actually it has such a rich history. And what I wanted to do was honor that, at least, at least through showing pictures in the lobby. So what I did is I went to the library and I found actually an original brochure from 1939 that was designed um, to show the amenities to the, um, there was, designed to attract people that were coming to San Francisco for the Golden Gate International Exposition, which was in 1939. And um, it showed, a, it just talked about all the amenities the hotel had. They, they said it had been remodeled, um, spent a million dollars remodeling it, and they showed pictures of the rooms and the lobby. And it was quite um, striking because you can actually see the lobby, the picture that they have of the lobby, you can still see the stairs. And so every time I look up at the, when I'm sitting in the lobby, I just look up at the, at the ceiling and I look up at those, uh, I guess they're called dentines, you know, some of the, the uh, furnish, the um, original finishes. And I think, gosh, that was probably here back then. And I just try to put myself back in time and think about, gosh, if these walls could talk, you know, and the little traces of what was here then. But it's nothing like it was. I mean, it, it looked like a really grand, grand, almost grand hotel, you know, back then. It was mid, mid range, but it was still very grand. Um, and I think it, w it went through World War II. I, it was even rumored that Billie Holiday stayed there, you know. And, and uh, um, I just think about all the changes that, that, took, that took place because, and the area has seen so many changes. Across the street at the Bristol, um, which is another hotel that was off the hook, um, apparently with all, the, and I remember that myself just from the uh, management, actually, Valerie Solanas, who, who Andy Warhol, who is famous for writing the Scum Manifesto and shooting Andy Warhol, which is highlighted in the movie I Shot Andy Warhol, um, died in that Bristol Hotel in 1988 or 1989. And so that's kind of like a little who's who tidbit. Um, and every time I look across, I, I, I stare at the Ambassador Hotel from my window and I see it's just vacant. I think there's a tiny activity. There may be, there may be There's a restaurant or a, cl a but club or you something. Started, type of yeah, yeah. But, but now, but, but originally, before it was the Bristol, the basement was the Black Cat Cafe. The Black Cat Cafe from the 20s was, 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 was where good fellows go to meet. Well, good fellows, it's kind of funny. It's kind of, kind of a gay, um, has a kind of a gay um, innuendo Risque to it, doesn't it? You know? yeah. But, um, well, actually, that back then, gay meant, gay didn't mean, even mean homosexual. But um, the Black Cat Cafe later on moved to North Beach and became, um, uh, you know, very instrumental with Jose Saria's legacy. Um, with um, Mother Norton, you know, Queen, with the Widow Norton. You know. mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, it was, no one knows it was originally right across the street at the Bristol Hotel, you know. But so I just think it's kind of, it's a, that, you know. So what is, your, uh, what is your take on uh, the Tenderloin uh, Museum? Well, I went to the Tenderloin Museum. Compare, uh, by compare, well, what I mean by take is, you know they have the, uh, Pride Museum in the Castro. 
And it seems like um, they're competing for... You think? Well, see, the, I, I love... First of all, I have to give a shout-out to Don Romesburg and, and the historical, the Gay Lesbian Historical Society, which I've actually volunteered for um, th through several things, um, namely the Polk Street Lives in Transition exhibit c several years back when, when they, I worked with Joey Plaster, who um, I was very honored to work with that. What that was was um, when Polk Street... When we saw that Polk Street was... was, was we were losing Polk Street you know, to the becoming gentrified. I have very special, that was the song we actually heard, mm -hmm. I did, mm -hmm. Golden Age of Hustlers by Bambi Lake, covered by Justin Bond, talks about the Polk Street Hustlers. And when I moved to San Francisco 18 years ago, I, you know, I, I remember those boys, and it was, it, there's something, I don't know, it's, it was something, yeah, something's the missing. Energy. Yeah, yeah, right, there's right. energy. Yeah, anyway, this missing, that's gone. Yeah. That's gone now, and yeah. so it's very hard, difficult for me to walk around Polk Street because it's like there's it's, nothing. It's, it's just dead. It's nothing yeah, it's that we remember. I mean, in fact, mm -hmm. like they said, I saw this. Um, it was it was um, under the Golden Gate. Mm -hmm. That they uh, there's a podcast under the Golden Gate, and um, and um, they showed they were interviewing these kids that were in the bars. They had no no concept that this was once the center of the you know gay life, and it was just like. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! They don't even know. Like that means like, our history is disappearing. And then with Esther Noche, I was talking about mm -hmm. this last night. With Esther Noche gone, it was just. Yeah. I mean, so anyway, our history is is gay is, is, is disappearing. You know. Yeah. So I mean, it, this part of the tour that I that I wanted to highlight was these the sites in this tour. Like, um, there's so many sites of, of gay interest in in the little block radius that I live in, which are in Taylor. I mean, there was the Bulldog Bass, which I, we have. That's actually at least being commemorated. It's open now as the Bulldog Bath again, but it's a bathhouse for dogs. For dogs and so right. <laughs> but I think that was kind and of And then cute. Marlena <laughs> Boulevard. Or Marlena oh, oh, Vicky Marlene. Marlene. Of course, Vicky Marlene. You know, so she was the lady with the liquid spine. I had, um, I, I did have the, I did have the honor of meeting her before, just right before she passed. And she used to live in uh, uh, Twenty Franklin Street. Oh, is that where she? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, yeah. When I was living there at the Derek Silva Community. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. And I, I she was um, the oldest. Um, I guess the oldest. You know, most yeah, performing. Not, yeah, still yeah. performing at, at Aunt Charlie's. Yeah. Yes, and 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 she was something. I love. She, she has a documentary out. Um, forever, forever. But I want to get back yeah. to uh, anyway. uh, the Tenderloin Museum. I passed. Oh. I went in there a couple of times, and I seen that they have a. They do a Tuesday screening. Of uh -huh. um, transgender, Tuesday. transgender, uh -huh. right? And but there's not a one that represents uh, a black one. There's no black represented in that lineup. Oh really? No, 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 no. And uh, I have issues with that as cool. well, as well as um, uh, how they um, uh, mis well misrepresent Compton's riot. How do you think they misrepresent? Well, that? because there, there's no blacks in there. There's no. There's no. No. There's no. Uh, black um, you mean the narrative, dialogue, nothing represented in uh, the Compton uh, riot, although there were blacks uh, there. Well, that was riot was a very... And, and, and Miss Major, uh, she's one who has... A, 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 even Miss December. Mm -hmm. These are uh, uh, icons of the city that, that are not being... Mm -mm. Celebrated or re remembered, yeah. and I'm and I'm sure they were there doing that outbreak, but and but you know e and even those people, but um, no, it's just um. Well, it's like history gets you know history get whoever speaks the loudest like Felicia Elizondo, who's actually been the, the voice of the Hamdas cafeteria, told me she really doesn't even remember hardly. She's not even sure she was she was actually there. Mm -hmm. She's in the documentary. Is is is, uh, is saying she was there, and she said that when they did the documentary, Susan Steiger's documentary, she didn't know she was. I know when I came to the <laughs> city, I used to go. Uh, that was a that was a whole spot. That was a, that was where the whole the whole you know the sex workers came and rested, you know, well, it, rested it was, um, and you know ducked and you know, ran away from the police. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The El Rosa Hotel. No, you know what I'm yeah. saying. But I'm just you know I'm just saying. 
Um, you mean conference room? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that's what it was. It was actually was that people would sit. And there, there was a game manager, and it was like mm -hmm. a Denny's. I mean, I think of it like a Denny's, like an only coffee shop where people would, you know. Th but what was happening was it was actually against the um, law back back then to dress mm -hmm. against your gender. Like, and you had to wear three articles of clothing from your your biological gender at all times. Mm -hmm. So if you were a queen. You know, I mean, gosh, my God, I, you, know, you were arrested. I mean, can you imagine getting went to, to jail for wearing mascara? Yeah, I went to jail for wearing I mean, um, come on. Uh, female attire. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, yeah. God, I would have been like, I would have, gosh. I, 18 months. Are you serious? I mean, yes, I, I'm very I, much serious. I mean, 18 my, months. For that? I mean, yeah, yes. Vicky Marley, I've heard stories. I mean, 18 I can, I can, months. Well, good Lord, that must have been. Yes, I mean, that's back just in Wisconsin, 18 months. Of all places. Yes. 18. But out here, I mean, like with the place. with the ins with this, with the uh, s uh, these institutions coming into this into these areas, mm -hmm. you know, and it seems like there's um, I don't know, uh, a, a, a comp I don't know, a, seems like they're they're vying for corporate sponsorship or corporate Id identification or. Are you talking about the, like specifically for the museum? The museum, yeah. yes. The, so the museum the was Randy Shaw's effort, and and he Randy Shaw actually is the director of Tenderloin Housing Clinic, and he's also um, a long he's written books on activism and and um, I, I basically if you've read his book he, he did it, he just published a book called The Tenderloin and it's a it's a basically a thorough, it's a historical corrective um, account of the Tenderloin's history and it's very well doc very well researched, um, but basically if you read the book. Than you've seen at the museum because I've seen uh, everything in, that I've seen in the museum is 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 the book is pages from the book so it's basically you know it's just the book up on the wall <laughs> but um, I did get, go to a, a opportunity to see a screening of a film a documentary that was filmed back in the sixties called Drugs in the Tenderloin and it was a documentary um, that was filmed right around the, you know that area where I, where I live now um, it was just um, very raw, you know. Um, it was interesting because that used to be called the meat rack. It was the male hustlers. It was the queens were hustling, you know, in one area, and then the boys would hustle in the area. It, it was it was interesting to see and to talk about drugs and how um, it was just so, you know, like oh wow, this is the area for all this vice and you know, drug activity, and it was very real. It was like direct. It was like direct cinema um, documentary. I thought it was interesting because back in the when it was the uh, bus depot, mm -hmm. you know they used to have the bus depot on Seventh and Market, right. and then what had happened is people get they'd come to San Francisco thinking it was going to be the, you know they'd hear it was gay mecca and they'd jump on the bus and come to San Francisco and then they'd basically end up getting turned these boys would end up getting turned out they'd, they'd amble you know a few blocks down to Fifth and Market or whatever and get turned out at the Peter Pan you mm -hmm. know what I mean I remember Peter <laughs> okay Pan. yeah, yeah. I mean, so I just and or I always say turned out but it's like you know sold into slavery you know they get Shanghai basically by some benefactor and um, you know some and, sugar daddy some sugar daddy yeah and then um, you know, and then being turned out there were so many hustlers that there was such like a, almost an epidemic. Of, mm -hmm. of of young of, mm -hmm. of, of hustlers that they of you know run runaways they um, formed actually the first mobilization they mobilized it was the first gay youth group to they were the first group to be mobilized as gay youth in the nationwide it was called Vanguard mm -hmm. and they were they were kind of neck and neck with um, the the queens because they were all you know, disenfranchised and they were they were sitting at Compton's together you know. I mean, you know, the boys were over here, and the runaways were, you know, and then the queens were over here. And then, um, but they were all, you know, basically two disenfranchised communities coming together in this compass cafeteria, and they were both, um, you know, targeted by the police. The police were always harassing them, and, and that's what, that's, they were instrumental in, in the riot, the, the famous riot that predated Stonewall by three years. Um, there was somebody, um, I guess I was told, there was a, a lesbian they, they called um, Sugar Shaker, Sugar Shaker's, Died, she threw a sugar shaker through the through the glass window, and you know it was it started the, the you know the riot, and it was drag queens throwing coffee and you know things like that, you know. But um, so, what are some of your issues that you have with? Uh, and I know you have quite a few uh, <laughs> with uh, uh, Randy Shaw's. Um, oh, and not necessarily. I don't necessarily. I don't want to. I mean, because Randy, I I know Randy. I'm not talking about Randy Shaw personally. Yeah. I'm talking about as far as his uh, well, the museum, stewardship over yeah. the museum. Well, the museum. I and I have to be fair because I have not gone. To, I mean, I've I've gone over there as a guest, and I saw like the, the film. 
he, well, had, he said it to me. He, there's nobody. I didn't see anybody from the community there. Who I should ask her to say when I went there, it was all people coming from I don't know where they're from, but they were they were, you know, learned. You know, they were they were they were they were clearly not from the Tenderloin, and um, and it was I just thought that I don't know, I thought that maybe there could be considering it is in the Tenderloin. I, I don't know who these people are doing tours over there. There's all this talk about tours, and they're, and they're, they're basically partnering up with Piano Fight to do these, like, theme nights for techies to come and see how the Tenderloin... It's, it's, it's all very... to sell drinks at Piano Fight and the, the doing package deals to do a tour and then do a drinks and, like, end it all at the nighttime of, enter of entertainment. And it's like, oh, great. So basically just it's basically tourism for the, you know... And to show these tours, I thought, they're actually having tours to, for techies to show them that it's not... Threatening, I thought. Oh, don't pander. Don't pander to the to the stereotype. You know, I was like, it's, you know, if they're scared of the neighborhood, we don't want them there anyway. You know, let them let the, let the myth pervade. You know that it's scary. Stay out of our neighborhood. I just thought that like pandering to the man. I mean, who cares? You know, if they. I was kind of upset about that. I was like, it's our neighborhood. You know, I like kind of like the the rumor that people think it's scared to go in there. And then it keeps the you know who we don't we don't want them there anyway. So, but anyway, it was really sad because the Twenty One Bar, you know, the Twenty One Bar, which is the oldest dive bar there and left, uh, right there in Turk and Taylor, is now gone. And they had the, all this memorabilia in there. You used to be able to go in there, and the, uh, they had just great memorabilia. You know, they had been there so long. It was a dive. It was a little dive, but it was a community dive, and it was it was you know very very special to the neighborhood. People that went there. And I, um, it's gone now. And they're, and they're, and they've. Yeah, and the they've one on uh, high, uh, uh, high, 222. Oh, that was the Black Hawk? You mean the Black Hawk that used to be there? Yeah. That used to be the Black Hawk, and that was a, that was a big jazz club back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and that was actually torn down. We had, that was the, some best, some, uh, that one thing you could say for Randy Shaw's museum is that they are drawing attention to that, you know, that, to that, what took place there, the jazz musicians, the, the musicians that took place, the Grateful Dead, the people that recorded there, you know, some, some very famous, you know. And, and the you know, Cadillac Hotel. Oh, and the Cadillac oh, Hotel. Yeah, it's actually at, right. at the bottom of the Cadillac yeah. Hotel, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, you know, so, uh, so many things took place in the Tenderloin. Actually, originally, it, it was called St. Anne's Valley. I mean, even before it was the tender, before it was the Vice area, it was St. Anne's Valley, and then it was a valley, actually. And you know. uh, yeah. Casser was Goat Hill. Oh, I thought. It, oh, really? Yeah, well, no, I thought it was Eureka Valley. Goat no, Hill was like Goat, Goat Hill. Hill. I thought it was near. They, they had Trero. goats up there to uh, keep the. Um, I thought that was near Potrero. No, it was, no, it was Goat Hill. <laughs> Goat no, Potrero too, but um, but I. Goat Hill. Yeah. Oh my god. They they had um, a problem with um, um, rodents or sheep or oh, something. But I remember I used to live on Twenty Seventh and Diamond. Oh my god. And, um, okay. Uh, that's what I was. I was told that by a uh, long-term residence that lived there. Oh, I oh yeah. gosh! You know, this morning I walked back from Seventeen and Sanchez. I had a. I, I was coming home this morning, and I passing these Victorians and walking through the neighborhood, and I just thought, oh gosh, they're, they're just such gorgeous homes, and they're just so, you know. And I just looked up, and I thought, gosh, they're so so expensive. It's just, it's you know, it's just so sad to walk through now and realize that it's just all. And the church closed, and so many changes are happening, and it's just like I don't know. I just, I've only been in the city almost eighteen years. Well, that's a long time, eighteen years. But I think about the people like yourself who have been here maybe even longer. You've seen me. Yeah, I've been here more. since eighty four. Yeah, you've seen so much more changes. I mean, I don't know how you can handle it. I mean, I, I have a hard time with change, as it is. But um, anyway, back to the, I just wanted to talk. More about the ambassador. Well, um, go ahead. That's yeah. what I want to hear for. Um, well, Talk about the ambassador. I wanted to bring some kind. Of, I wanted to bring some kind of commemoration, you know, to, to talk about it because it, um, so it doesn't it's get. Not, it's, it's not a dive. You no, know, like, it's not a dive. Well, no, it's not a dive, and it was very instrumental in the gay. Not just you know in the vice, but also in with the AIDS care. You know mm -hmm. that was the first. It was there were so many people dying of AIDS in the epidemic, then when Randy um, actually. Hank Wilson, the manager of the hotel at the time, he was known as Mr. Ambassador. <clears throat> I want something to, he, he was responsible for the influx of um, people with AIDS mm -hmm. coming into the ambassador to use, to, 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 to live there as the right. final resting place. Mm -hmm. It was the first hospice, basically, mm -hmm. before the city really had a, a system of care, you know, to, to handle AIDS patients mm -hmm. or people, people with AIDS. Um, they didn't know what the, what the hell they were doing. And the, and the ambassador was, was, was where it all happened. I mean, people had, Died their last 
breath there. They had their, you know, their, there was dementia, you know, all the horrible mm-hmm. ravaging things that happened with AIDS back then. Oh, I remember, you know? I remember what was yeah. up in there, housed up in there. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean, I, and I was, I mean, I think about my room, and I think about, I mean, I stare at, at the, w- the windows, the, the view from the window would be the same, but everything mm-hmm. else in the, in the, you know. Yeah, the bistro, too, was, it, was, it, was, yes. was, was where a lot of the girls went and breathe their final breath. He said people would just, they wouldn't know they were dead and they, they would just start smelling, mm-hmm. that it would, you know, and you wouldn't know. And because and I guess... They I were known imagine. as, uh, that uh, th- th- those two in the West were known as AIDS, AIDS hotels. They were sufficiently known yeah. as AIDS hotels, right. I guess, yeah, because, mm-hmm. well, that was because of Hank Wilson. I, so I, w- I wanted to have something, I wanted to have some kind of exhibit. And, and actually there was, an, uh, there was a phot- photography exhibit back then by um, Paul Fusca, who was, a, who was the photographer, and he did these really raw photographs of people dying, mm-hmm. or, you know, people's last their life at the ambassador. It was like mm-hmm. direct cinema. It was very raw and very real, and, and it just showed, you know, th- the truth. And I see this photo today, it's jarring because you see people, you know, and they're in what looked AIDS, you know, I mean, it with the Carposi sarcoma, and, re- and I, I recognize, I recognize from the interior, oh my God, that's, uh, that's the hallway, you know, I mean, I see some mm-hmm. of the architectural things in the ambassador that are still there, um, the roof that they used to throw cigarettes out on, there were rats running around, that's um, now a pavilion, you know, we have a courtyard pavilion, that they turned it into a pavilion, uh, where we have our, um, it's a patio, and we go out there, and it's a nice little area for us to it's a sun area, but um, back then it was just a roof, and people just like threw cigarettes and garbage on it. And so, you know, there's been a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. I, I um, I, I just think that people don't need. I think people need to know that. I mean, the people that live there now, a lot of people are just walking around in the days. I think I know everybody in the building. I, I walk in the building, I and I see. Well, it's the, a community. It's a community. It, it is, is a community. A community. Yeah, it is a community. A yeah. unique yeah. and genuine and yeah. authentic community. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a sanitized version of uh, high end. Uh, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. Whatever you know, and that's taking place right and I hope that Bristol does not turn into that. I really if they turn out I don't know what's going on in the Bristol, but I see little I see little people going over there and they, they there's construction, there's something mm. brewing at the at the Bristol right now. Mm. The Bristol basically was it was closed at least for four for years. years. Like, it's been closed at least as long as I lived in the ambassador yeah. it's been closed. And uh, what had happened was they'd started to remodel apparently and then they ran out of money and that then it was just like just left. And it was just like, you know, abandoned. And so, and I just, I, I stare straight into these windows, and I just think, gosh, if these, can you imagine the peep show that would take place if these people still lived in the hotel, you know, like it used to? Oh, my God. Like, you know, rear window, like, but anyway. Um, so it's very quiet on that side of the street, which I don't, I'm not complaining about, but um, on the Eddie side, <laughs> there's all that activity. And that's the other thing. The t- um, right a- under the tea room, there's the one, th- one gay theater left. Uh, it's, it's, it's like the, uh, 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 the old, you know, basically, um, they call fashion. it. They, they refer to it as the last. Um, Fuck Palace. <laughs> uh, Something like that. CD. CD. Yeah, the CD. They, yeah, they were all, it, now it's, nowadays it's all you know. Yeah, everything is sanitized. That's yeah. the last vestige. It's the last CD. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not really CD. Even it's not really CD. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the last place like you can go to. It's it's a, it's, yeah, it's an old fashioned place you go to. Basically, the tea room theater. It says all male entertainment, and I just love it. it has the flashing lights, and it's like you know, I just the lobby. The little lobby has all these little porn porn, you know, um, you know, old porn boxes on it with like the little curtain, the velvet curtain and the, the little ticket booth. And then you go in and it's completely dark. You mm. don't see a thing. You're like, oh my God. Mm. You kind of, you know, you have to get used to the lights and there's a screen. I, I didn't realize it used to be a theater. That actually is a theater, mm. a real theater. Yeah, but is. there's no movie. It's yeah. just like people fooling around in the little Well, there's thing. movies. They, I've they, never they seen show, movie. well, well, yeah, I've been there. They, they show porn. Oh, well, they'd have yeah. to, because it's not... They, they, they show <laughs> porn, of course they would. and they have go-go dancers. Of course, yeah, they have dick dancers, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are mostly, you know, basically... But they're mostly it's a, it's in, a, in, yeah. in there for the back room activity. That well, or even in the seats. Yeah, like well, of course, yeah. They, yeah. Run, they don't, you know... They're very uninhibited. Yeah, I, 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 I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I think it's uh, thank God for that, right? I mean, and maybe I I went to this wonderful presentation um, a few weeks ago at the uh, at the at the um, I, at the uh, Don Romsberg's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, venue at the Historical Museum in Castro, and they had um, they had uh, oh, I don't know. they had a presentation on the closure of the bathhouse. It's called Sex Panic, and it was it was so informative. I didn't realize just how many bathhouses there were in San Francisco, of course, that everywhere, and there's one right around the corner, I see that now, there's one right around the corner on Ellis, mm-hmm. and it, I see that every time I pass it, I just like, I salute it, and I think about what, gosh, what, it has Turkish, um, 
it has like a Turkish moon on it, and I, I that used to be the athletic club. Yeah, the athletic there's club. a there's one down near the Bulldog, of course, because that's no, you know, no, no. That, I'm yeah. talking about the what they call it. It, well, it was um, a natatorium at one time, and then it was a hostel for a minute, briefly. Which one are you talking right about? Right there, across the street from uh, uh, Hilton. Yeah. Right next to the parking lot, right across the street from Hilton, mm-hmm. the yeah. natatorium. The yeah. natatorium. Well, that's what they. It was a swimming hole, but it was a bath. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Was, yeah. was the Hilton? That wasn't even there back then, probably was it? No, that wasn't. You know, actually, Diane Feinstein. If, if Diane Feinstein had had her way, the entire Tenderloin would have been eradicated. They were going to build. That was going to be the convention center. They were like when we have Moscone Center, mm-hmm. South America. They wanted to build that convention center in the Tenderloin, and the only reason they didn't was because of the topography. It was too many hills. They didn't want the tourists to have to walk. But um, so thank God for that, right? But they did. They eradicated a lot of the the the, the you know the original whorehouses that mm-hmm. were there. A lot of the original Victorians and to build these hotels like the Hilton and the Nico and these horrible mm-hmm. Park Fifty Five and the, you know Park Fifty Five was where all the bookstores were. Mm-hmm. I hear you know. Mm-hmm. And they got rid of those. And now it was like corporate. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. The Penny Arcades, and they got rid of those vice. There was a vice area back then. You had to have, I guess, the gay, the gay had to exist in a vice area. And as the they, well, the good thing is, as they got more power, they didn't. They got out of the vice area. Well, so it I was the same thing down there in Fremont when the bus terminal, where the bu- old bus terminal, there was that was a whole gay scene down there. There was an uh, uh, arcade right across the street from there, and a couple of. Uh, uh, and the record era too. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there was all kind of. I just think about that. Sex that clubs sense. and um, bathhouses. I just that think... Was, that was a cruising spot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they were, they were at the Arrow. And right around the corner from, you know, where I market Mason right mm-hmm. there, was that little T-shirt shop where they show those horrible Marilyn Monroe, bastardized Marilyn Monroe T-shirts. They're mm-hmm. all gangbanger, like, you know, she's all done up. Anyway, this is just really kind of ghetto, ghetto punk. Anyway, it, that used to be the old Crow Bar, which is the oldest dive hustler bar for 50 years mm-hmm. in the city. For 50 years. And I was just like, wow, gosh, you know, I just think about that, all those theaters. The reason, the reason, the, the mini market originally. And it was an art to hustling. Now, there was art to hustling. Yeah, no, yes, there was art to hustling. It was an art Thank to you. hustling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Know, you had to finesse. You had to Thank have you. finesse and panache. You know, the old, yeah, you know, you when I moved here. Be, you no. just couldn't be out there. Especially, and you know, and, or on these online. Yeah. I mean, I mean the, there was, when I first moved to San Francisco, I was enamored with the, the archetype of the gay hustler, mm-hmm. you know, the, for fashion, mm-hmm. you know, it made me just like to, to, you know, there was the truck driver, there was the gay hustler, there was always that, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of mystique about it, the old Pulp Fiction, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of pulp, gay Pulp Fiction books that talk about, mm-hmm. you know, that there's, it's like coded, you know, it's very right. coded, um, and so um, I've always been enamored with that, just kind of a romanticizing it anyway, yeah, but, well, was but the art to it, there was an art to it, there really was, actually, when I first moved to San Francisco, and um, I, you know, fell into the to the milieu, so to speak, on Polk Street. And um, I do remember, it was like the boys telling, you know, police telling me how they walked across, walked against traffic so you could see the driver's mm-hmm. faces, so they could hop in the cars. And, and there, you know, all these little things, there's a little subculture. It was very interesting. Um, of course, nowadays, it's all, you know. Oh, that, was Polk, that, was, that, that was the attraction of Polk Street. You can go, you can step up out of the doorway. I used to live at 1081 Polk. Uh, right across the street from the fire department. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was one of the I was one of two black individuals that lived there, and I mean I lived in, my, in the front of unit apartment right up of, over on the second floor, first floor right up over the doorway. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, you can walk out your door and jump into a a, a, a car, yeah. you know, like you would like a taxi, yeah. you know, with a to a date. Yeah. Yeah, to, to a date. I mean that was common. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I there was no solicitation. They saw you. They liked you. You know, yeah. you, you know, and they met you. Well, there was there was a whole song and dance like right. standing at the phone booth. Right, right. You know, you, you, and, you, know, you like strike, you, you yeah. step out your door or the doorway, you strike a pose, and there you go. Yeah, then you, you know? go. You have a drink. You go. You know, go away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Now it's now it's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all. Different. You know, when I I know and the, it, well it. Well, then there was Craigslist. I mean, there was the Cra- then there was whole like, then people you know, went to online mm-hmm. the Craigslist, and then that stopped, and they you know and it, and 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 now people I mean, the whole thing with rent play it got really ridiculous because mm-hmm. a lot of the, there was a lot of there was pride actually the people saying oh I'm a hustler and I, I make this mm-hmm. and I I only charge you know X amount of dollars. and I was like you know what you're I always had like 
it's self esteem thing for it. I thought hustlers had to be, you know, like you know, you want something you want to purchase, so you know, mm-hmm. something you're a hustler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But these boys, they're just the attitude. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I, you're not a hustler. You can't be a hustler. You know. But you know, I, I still, they, they, I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't get into yeah, all that. And back in the end, it was never <laughs> nothing. It's, like, it was so. It was, it was, no it's, price it's, quote. No, there was. You know, it was quite. You know, they're they're always so. And they have an app for it now, mm-hmm. and it's like a uh, boy next door. I mean, that that's a great marketing scheme, but it's too marketed. It's too polished. It's too. It's too like he has a sanitized. Sanitized. There's no it's excitement. Not, and there's nothing. Can, can you pay him with a credit card right, or pay there's him nothing with daring. No, or, 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 dangerous or, or adventurous. It was survivalist. It was there's really survival. Nothing, you know, it was. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Anyway, so that's that's all. Maybe I were romanticizing it, but that that's just. Um, but that's the attraction. You that know was the attraction. Yeah, no, yeah. it still is because people they're not coming here. To uh, just to look at the uh, exteriors of architects, that you know they're coming here to get down, to to, to experience their fantasies and their fetishes. Oh, that's you know what it used to be. Yeah, well, you know they're not coming here just <laughs> just to be gainfully tech not uh, uh, well, employed in a tech. That's what they. That's world. actually no. They they really. That's I heard that they did a poll or something about why people are moving to San Francisco and. Gay was not a re- people are not coming to San Francisco because it's a gay mecca anymore. They're not coming because you know gay is everywhere now. Hello, I mean mm-hmm. every city, every year. It's not you don't need these little areas. You know you don't need this certain area, and so which is good. I guess it's 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 because. But what I would have been disturbed by is the absence of the because I can remember coming up in just moving to high school and hearing just like you know. About the gay activist trope, right. you know what I mean, with the right, act up, right. and there was that whole militant right, right, kind of, right. thing. and I that's came, gone. Right, I came out here from, yeah. uh, as a result of Harvey Milk um, being elected um, supervisor, su- supervisor, mm-hmm. and they showed his inauguration uh, on TV, and his lover, you know, mm-hmm. they thought that was, yeah, I that's what draw me. Although I had been out here prior to that because I was stationed at Fort Orr okay. back in the early 70s. But uh, I came back to San Francisco because of that. And I figured, well, this was a place where I could live out my Great. life, yeah. you know, and, you know, pursue my, you know, own, own um, alternative yeah. lifestyle. Alternative you know? lifestyle, yeah. Freedom, but, right? Yeah, but I've pretty much done that, but it, trust me, it hasn't been easy. You know, it's been a lot of barriers and a lot of challenges. You know, but um, that was the draw for me. Yeah. Harvey Milk. Okay, so Harvey Milk, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, and I, I, I was speaking even, even of, uh, after him, you know, because I, he died at 78, I was five years old. Uh, but I remember that I was speaking of the AIDS activism, like that I came of age in. Um, you know, hearing about ACT UP and all the, you know, mm-hmm. Queer Nation and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. That's what I was drawn to. And then back then, when I was in college, back in the late ni- or mid-90s, um, there was a TA that I had in a, sens- in a sexuality class that told me, oh, you were, if we just missed you, we would have been so great in ACT UP because of the way I was, so, you know, I was, it was Don't Ask, Don't Tell by then. You know, it was, that's what was going on there mm-hmm. as far as the, you know, yeah, well, the gay culture now is, no, you know, they've reduced, they reduced it to a subculture. It's, it's not, it's and, not and, even that. And it's, and it's, it's not even, you know, I'm thinking, what, what, what is wrong with that whole ideation? I don't, you know, it was, it was a, it was a community. I mean, it was it a really thriving was, it was a commu- yeah. community. And Castro, and the whole thing was trans. Castro was just in this developmental Stages of it was it, Eureka right? Valley, and they basically they were gentrifying. The ca- there was a lot of consternation between mm-hmm. the original Irish denizens of Eureka mm-hmm. Valley, the Catholics mm-hmm. and the Irish denizens, mm-hmm. and then the, and the gays that were coming in these new and this and this, just like now with the kind of mm-hmm. the techies, but they're kind of different because the gays were coming in and they're seeing an outsider. And, and then there were spotted uh, black communities, uh, you know, up and down um, Sanchez and Seventeenth. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I, that's I remember that with the black church on the corner there, uh, uh, Sanchez. What that's where I was this last night. Seventeenth right. Sanchez. Well, that was the, where um, um, the some children? kind of vacant yeah. lot with flowers. Yeah, most. this children's um, well, school. Well, somebody right? they burnt it down. It was a black church when they when they started the gentrification process. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, it's across the street from um, um, uh, what's that? Uh, it's a school now, isn't it? No, 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 no. no. It's called oh, shit. 
there's the cafe, and then there's the right. Yeah. I know, and there's right. the hacienda apartments right there, and, the, right. and the, right. there's a church right there. I can, I can see. But it, it used to be a, a holiness church. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and when they started the gentrification, I can never remember. Yeah, yeah. But when they started the gentrification process, that was one of the first buildings that was mysteriously burnt down, like like it had like the same thing happened to the uh, building. Uh, that apartment building and the mission uh-huh. recently, uh-huh. Yeah. where that person died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. So w- when when gentrification comes in, yeah, you know People. these things happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and they they're not they go unaccounted. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's no one th- to account for. Was that wasn't that the one where the, the pumpkin patch used to be? You remember they always had the pumpkin patch right there in Church of Rocco? Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 right, yeah. right, right. The Christmas tree right. stand. There was like and now it's yeah. Well, they just closed. They just had an article now that they, they just had the last service at um at the at church was Most Holy Redeemer was that was it? in the Castro the last that was the gay church it was the mm-hmm. last service they're not going to do it anymore they they it's they're tearing it down well. you know I mean it's it's gone you know gone you could, the people that lived there um you know well. that's not even protected. That says a lot about yeah. the mindset of the new inhabitants it's just, it's of the disgusting. community. It's you know really, yeah, it's terrible. It's real. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. There's. I just. I wanted to also to draw attention to um, today's VAR, this week's VAR mm-hmm. about um, Tasha. Tasha. Oh yeah, yeah Tasha Coalition. T- yeah, 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 Tasha Coalition. Tasha De Jesus was a was a girl that I knew. Yeah, um, we, you know, I knew yeah, her too. Yeah. yeah, and I actually had, it was hard because I I've been to her apartment in in, mm-hmm. in, in Bayview and and that's where she, she died. There was a, it says report details trans woman stabbing death and we just she died in February. She was killed, and now um, it was so tragic and so sudden and 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 it was it, I. I knew oh, they it, tried yeah. to dismiss it as being a domestic. Uh, yeah, there was a domestic. No, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. They're saying it was. It's not officially a hate crime, but right. obviously it was. I think it was a tr- obviously maybe a date, some or something. She, somebody she knew. She knew appropriately, but it was. It was. It was. It was just you know it was needless. And, and but now actually they're saying that report has come out to uh, give more details, and they talk about how she died, and and but they're still not giving all the details. That they're they're not saying it's you know. But at least there's more details, and they're acknowledging it. But they have this coalition now to prevent future, you know, to give mm-hmm. more uh, sunshine mm-hmm. ordinance or something to, to prevent future, you know, um, instances of tr- violence against trans women. And, and um, it was just tragic because Tasha, she had, her, you know, she had her troubles, but she, but she, you know, she had her, her apartment. I mean, she did have an apartment. You know, she she got that. She she, she used to live at the um, the Ritz when I when I met her. She was at the she got a room at the Ritz Hotel, not the not the Ritz Hotel, but the SRO. And then, um, and then she got her own apartment in Bayview, and she, you know, um, so and I had just been there. I had just been there, you know, uh, like the week before. The week before, and then all of a sudden she's dead. And, oh God! So anyway, I did. It was just shout out to you know, Tasha De Jesus. May she, you know, rest in peace. But I hope that there's more. Um, this whole trans awareness thing that's going on right now, it's its becoming a little out of hand. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot. Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't know. I, I had issues with yeah, it. I know. I really yeah, I really do. I was talking about this with my friend Joan Jet Black or, or Terrence Smith, mm-hmm. who's who used to be Joan Jet Black back in the 90s. Because if you think about it, a lot of girls that lived in an ambassador, you know. They, they ran the place. Right, they, they ran right, the place. Right, I mean, right. I, that's what they, they, you know, they and ran. They're not even, they're not even a highlight. No. No, 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 no. Anybody's no, that's I'm, that's, uh, no. news article or no. uh, the we topic only, we only of, hear about of anybody's discussion. No, we only hear about comments. And it wasn't all about, God for loving, it was, you know, comments happened, but it wasn't, I'm so sick, really, of like, comments, 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 because it really, they have the sidewalk plaque, but that wasn't the definitive presence of the transgenders mm-hmm. in, the ca- in, the, in the tenderloin. It really wasn't. And, you know, sorry, Felicia, but it really wasn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, there, it, what, they were... They were, they were the whole thing. All over the they were place. all over the place. All it wasn't all just that one place. riot. It was like yeah. these comments, comments, comments. And it, the place. El Rosa Hotel and her experience. Oh. And that's why I figured that tour that we did I was was missing in a lot of ways mm-hmm. because it was basically Felicia's personal narrative running around, you know, mm-hmm. this is what, her own thing. Mm-hmm. This is where she remembers. This is where Celebrating she Celebrating you know, her, her, her. Yeah. Her and you know, God forbid anyone should. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But, um, <laughs> but I, I think. I, I think that just gives me more, you know. I was talking about. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do. It, I'll do it. If it was handled right, it would have been. It's, it's going to be though. I think it, it just gives me impetus to to you know do another. I don't really say you should pick that back up. You know, I'm going and, to. And, I think and, I really and, should yeah. because it really wasn't given the um, the attention that I wanted to. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of fell in. I wanted to do I it, know. and you then you we had to. Come, to you were trying you know. to go along to get along. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then of course, have, have you seen actually this that Aja Monet? Mm-hmm. 
there's five. He's running. For, I don't know what he's running for, but there are five pages on Facebook that he Mr. has. Mr. Leather. Now it's something like. I, but now it's Ajumane Aston, Ajumane, Ajumane, or then his other name, J. Eugene. Ba I mean, I don't know which who he is. Or there's like five different names, and it's like it's really self-serving and self-indulgent, and he's like having all these people like vote for him for what? I'm like, what are you running for? I don't know. I don't want to. Like, I just. Whatever, I, I just really, it leaves that taste in my mouth. It's all about, I think it's self-promotion and trying to get his picture in all the papers. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that, and, uh, down that road <laughs> and just talk negatively. But it's just like, I got I just love the history and the tenderloin and stuff. And yeah, I think I that too. running into these people, and, uh, a lot yeah. of people are just using it, the, using exploiting the platform the to exploiting the tenderloin yeah, for their, their own, own purposes. Game, right, exactly. Right. And there's yeah, a, lot yeah, a lot of that. There's a lot of that. A lot of that. Yeah. And yeah. then they want to vilify and demonize people like us, yes. you know, who, who really have an empathy for the tenderloin mm -hmm. and the trials and, and yeah. tribulations that it has, you know, lived with. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, it gets kind of rough. Can, you know, and, and I don't get it. I don't, you know, the same people that are vilifying it, they're yet living there. I know. You know, know what I'm saying? And they, 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 and they about it. But, you know, why would you remain in a place where you're not comfortable? I know. Or feel safe. I, I think it's the or best neighborhood. Really. You know, I, I don't understand it. I but really they want to the sit there and bitch and complain and vilify and, and you know and, and criminalize yeah. their own neighbors. Well, you know what gets me is that I hate I hate in, I hate seeing, reading things on the internet about the element. You know, people people talk about because there's little. The element clubs. that they're the talking element. about is the people on the streets. They, basically, I mean, yeah, they, on, they talk about the element and the homeless people. And yeah, I'm like, you know yeah. what? If you don't like it, then stay out of the neighborhood, really, because mm -hmm. it's like they were there first. And I really, get, I think I, I'd, I'd r much rather contend with the crackheads, even though like you know, the clamoring, like the crackheads clamoring for your chain, you know, than, than having to deal with the hipsters mm -hmm. and the tourists gawking at us, like we're kind of like that, you're, you're in a yeah, zoo. Exactly. Like, and now, like, you know, what really gets me is when I see those double decker. A tour oh, buses I know. Every riding day. through and the they tenderloin. Do, they always, they always say, I can hear them from my window, and they always mm -hmm. say, the tenderloin. It's uh, they, some mm -hmm. kind of like some. They give a narrative. Yeah, they, 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 they give a little narrative. Ride, they ride, sorry, they ride up. The sorry, they, sorry they ride up turf. They come back down, uh, or the Golden Golden Gate, or they, yeah, Golden Gate, uh -huh. Turk. They always uh, ride past the park at the time, Mason. They ride yeah, right, right past you know, my window. I mean, they have a direct route. You know, I can hear them. Oh, here we go, the echo, and they're always the tenderloin, mm -hmm. and they're always talking about some the greedy side. Mm -hmm. you know. It's like and and I notice them. Uh, I notice the people. They take pictures of. Uh, the they do. Yeah, of the people on the streets, the homeless people. Look, you mom. Know. Oh, they just like they do the gays. Like yeah. you know, that's what I'm saying. Whenever I see the tour, don't and scare And it is so ugly. You know, I, know. What I'm saying? I I I love th I love it even more because when I see that, I represent. I'm like, you know what? They want to say homosexual. They're gonna say homosexual. So that's when I like, you know, I, I walk through Union Square. I'm like, I'm gonna show them how much I'm anyway. That I can get myself into trouble that way. Oh, but I do the same too. You know, <laughs> so I want to see type. You want to revert me to type? I'll you know. I'll I show mean, you I know. I start, you know, <laughs> I leave on my my spot, and I I I, I live on the uh, what fifth and oh, fourth and fifth and Howard, but I leave out on the fourth and Howard exit. Entrance, which is right across from Moscone. Didn't that used to be that Fourth Harbor? That back then, back in the day, that was like Skid Row. Remember? Right. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'll I'll go up to uh, Third and Howard and navigate down to uh, Market to uh, Montgomery. Oh, oh. And strike a pose and oh, I love let it. let them have it. Let them have it. <laughs> you know. I love it, honey. Cause yeah. you're, you are you can see it coming. You're like seven yeah, feet tall. So. Like you. I love it. <laughs> but I let them have it every it. day, all day long. Lick it up. <laughs> you want to see a fag? <laughs> I know. Sure they really, I mean, give us some, that's what it came yeah, for, yeah, right? You know and they, you know, oh, just, you know, they're just, people are so crazy. They really are. I mean, you know, I don't understand. I don't understand the, uh, I don't know. Fixation. The fixation. Yeah, I know. It's really. I think they got undisclosed um, mental health issues. They really do. I mean, they, I it's, they it's, do. we're just just from the behavior. I just had to get used to it because we're right on the border. Because like, so we live, I live right there at Mason and Eddie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like right there next to the next, next to the Union School. Well, Even when like, I come to your place, uh, a couple of times I've been there uh, over the week. You weren't there or, or unavailable, but um, you know I come through there at night and you, oh man, it's like every I'm talking about not the, not from the regulars, the people who live inhabits the the, the block or the uh -huh. community, 
talking about the t- the tourists. The ones you know? across the street at the, the right. Keller bar. The, the bar, the yeah, you know, the yeah. new open bar yeah. scene down there. Yeah, and bar. and the sports bar, the sports bar across uh-huh. the street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the Park 55 uh-huh. group, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's oh, surrounded by tourists. Oh, man, they, by they just, they get, it's like I'm on parade. I know, oh, I know. I do that every day, every day. It's like I'm on parade. I say, what the It gets to be a bit much. I mean, I just have to, I just, that's been happening to me my whole life, though. So I just think, have to think that, because I'm a star. I mean, I'm glad I'm for, I'm glad for, you know, for the attention, but I mean, my goodness. It gets a bit much. It's, it's like real. You know what I'm saying? Get over yourselves, I people. You know I know. I mean, now I know what, you know, yeah. what that's what celebrities have to go through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I wanted to read another little well, thing. Read. This is what another version of the article that I started that I never finished, mm. but this is another version. Mm. A Madonna song is stuck in my head whenever I walk around my neighborhood. Strains of, this used to be my playground, play like a Greek chorus scoring my strolls through San Francisco's tenderloin. It's a perfect theme for living on what used to be infamous as a gay hostro known as the meat rack. Where have all the hustlers gone? I bemusedly wonder as I wander. A proliferation of techies have moved into the mix of mid-market where only paupers and prostitutes once pervaded. It's befitting of a growing trend taking place in San Francisco as gay bars are closing at a rapid rate. Rainbow stripes painted in Castro crosswalks glitter in the sun as an indication depicting the area as officially gay-centric. Calling it a ghetto would be erroneous, but not so for the Tenderloin, a seedy downtown nexus of naughtiness that was once primarily gay. In fact, it was the city's first gay area in an era predating AIDS or even Stonewall. This whole block was all Queens, says Felicia Elizondo. The Tenderloin was the gay mecca. She rattles off a slew of names of defunct gay establishments. There was the 181, the Blue and Gold, Frolic Room, the Trap, and of course, Compton's Cafeteria. The list goes on and on. I am leading a walking tour of gay history through the Tenderloin with Felicia, a transsexual diva denizen of the neighborhood who once took care of people with AIDS at the height of the epidemic. So then uh, this is when I started realizing that I was starting to make the article sound like it was about her, so I had to shift gears. Um, then I, that's why another reason I didn't finish that one. I said, it's a, no se- it's a secret in San Francisco that the Tenderloin was the first gay ghetto. And then I said, um, it's a pattern that Felicia Elizondo is well familiar with, and then I had to s- stop again because I'm realizing it's not about her. Um, um, yeah, so anyway, I just... I, then I talked about Vicki Marlene, and, and so that was another version. I cannot finish this article to save the life of me. I have so <laughs> many different versions of it. And finally, I, I was supposed to be for DNA Magazine, the Australian uh, gay magazine that I that I. You know, for. I reached out to uh, Felicia by way of uh, Ivan Verera, uh, who um, asked me to have her on this show. Oh, and I'm mean. waiting to hear from her. Well, she's, she's I mean, I had she goes back and forth because she sometimes she's like she's saying she's not doing any more interviews and she's just going to go into her old retirement and, and then now now she's and she's real hot and cold so I don't know you might. Well, like, I talked yeah. to her before um, Folsom Street. Okay, couple of days she's back on the Street. she's back and, on the um, wagon. <laughs> uh, she gave me every indication that after um, this Folsom Street thing uh, that she would get back in touch, but I'm still waiting. Well, she's on Facebook today talking. I think she's busy with the 50th year commemoration of mm-hmm. Compton's, you know. But I think it would be interesting to have her on the show. She's yeah, she's wonderful. Mm-hmm. She can do a sound bite. I mean she mm-hmm. can you know, she she has been actually highlighted in several things about the Tenderloin, mm-hmm. you know, um the documentaries and things like that. That's seems to be her But the one that I want on on this show is um Miss Bambi Lake. No, no, Miss December. I I Oh want Miss December Miss she's Miss a, she you know, she's that queen. Yeah she yeah, yeah I like yes. Yeah. Yes, old school. Oh, yes, yes, old school mm. for real. You know who I also would like to. You've got to meet. Do you know Terrence Salen Smith, Joan Jet Black? She used to. She used to have. She's an old friend of mine for mm-hmm. like almost eighteen years. She, he, uh, was had this act at Josie's Cabaret and Juice Joint back in the nineties, and oh, he was cool. Joan Jet Black. You know Joan Jet Black. You've heard the yeah, name before. Really anyway, really people. He's an old friend of mine, and, and he, we were talking, I mean, he's old school. I mean, he's, he, you guys are contemporaries, and, and so, and, and, and so I, we talk about just like, gosh, where have all, the, we were always like, w- we're talking about the absence of it all. He says that he has this, um, this little baguette uh, that just he thinks that he calls him fairy godmother. Well, those and, are people that and doesn't even know who Bette Midler was. I'm like, oh my God! Then I, I and she comes running up to her, and Terrence is like, oh my God, I see him coming. It's like you know, they have of course he's, he's starstruck from Joan Jet Black, mm-hmm. you know, but he wants he doesn't know who Bette Midler. I'm like, well, Terrence, I didn't even know where to begin. Where would you even begin in documenting? Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> those are the kind of personalities 
iconic personalities that I would love to have on this show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, they're a wealth of nostalgia. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we're losing. You know? We it's are. like a legacy being lost. It, it you know? is. You know it really is. I mean, and it's Ray being Bourbon. replaced with that sanitized, commercialized. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yes, it is representation. I mean, look at Ray Bourbon. Cast. Remember Ray Bourbon and like you know, um, Bruce Fletcher. These are like the old school, you know, like Julian Elting, oh, yeah. female impersonator. F- Julian Elting was the highest burlesque. Paid, yeah, vaudeville. Female, yeah, yeah female even Bambi Lake for God's sake. Poor Bambi right. Lake. Bambi Lake, who is not getting the respect that she deserves. I don't mm. think you know. With that, with this, she poor Bambi Lake. I just I, she was, uh, you. For those of you who know Bambi Lake was, she was these, she wrote this the song that we had at the beginning of this, mm-hmm. and that was covered by, um, it was covered in that video by mm-hmm. by Justin Bowen. But anyway, Bambi Lake was an old school, you know. I mean, I heard of her. Yeah, she her, she um, wrote her bio- autobiography with um, Alan. Alan. His name. God. Alan and I share the same birthday, and I can't remember his last name right now. Alan Orloff. Alvin Orloff. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Alvin. Anyway, um, the, the uh, Life and Times of Bambi Lake and uh, back in the 90s, and she was basically a war hall. I mean, she's been around forever. But now, I mean, there are no retirement plans for... for she, she, she performed as a woman and got at, at, at North Beach, stripping, mm-hmm. and got away with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how that's how flawless, you know yeah, what I'm saying? That's right. You know? That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. And now, now, now I hear she's just not doing it well. She's not even wearing makeup anymore. She, she's wandering around the tenderloin, like, you know, like kind of in, 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 in not, not doing so well. So if I see her, I really want to I I find her and be like, have me. Because she was, she was a mother figure to so many, you know, mm-hmm. so many of this lost... You know, the wayward lost the land of lost children that we you know, like mm-hmm. Kelly Michaels mm-hmm. and like you know, my old friends of mine that you know, but back in the day, back in the day, you mm-hmm. know, that I um that, that aren't around anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so um flawless beauty. Flawless. Just flawless. flawless. Yeah. <laughs> Unreadable. Yeah, not like uh, mm-hmm. you know, or, or <laughs> not like yeah. You know, I'm not gonna mention names, but now it's become so I don't know. I mean it, back in the nineties Back in the '90s, it sounds like so long ago. I mean, I can remember like when I was in LA and we had Dragon Talent. The Dragon Talent was the first. Um, it was the first talent agency for for gender variant talent at the time. Mm-hmm. It was like '95, and it was such a big thing back then. And it, RuPaul was popular, you know, and and we were going out on auditions dressed in drag, and that was and then tra- there was the same area that that Nicolina did um, Tranny Shack that was started as just this little bar thing on Tuesday nights and became this whole, you know, this Tranny Shack. Now you, they don't really let you say Tranny anymore because it's politically incorrect whatever. I mean, can you believe that? It's yeah, cool. like <laughs> with Divine. I mean, I was so divine. taken with Divine. Divine. Oh, my I meant Divine. Oh, my goodness. Thing. Talk about an actress. I know. Seriously. 1988. That's what, that's, I mean, I was, I was like 12 Thirteen when hairspray came out, mm. or fourteen actually I was fourteen when John Waters' original hairspray came out, and I, I read all about that. That's why I became in, in, you know um, indoctrinated into Divine. I had all the I was going and renting all the movies, Pink Flamingos. When I was in eighth grade and mm. sh- showing my you know this look at me you had to watch and there's, this. There's no there's no discussion <laughs> of her anymore. I mean there's she's nothing. really not. well there was there was the not simply Divine but John Waters though he lived in San Francisco. And I see him you know he he God he's still around and he, t- mm. he talks he, he carries the torch you know he's he's you know, he, there really is, a, you know, mm-hmm. uh, she just started to become mainstream. She's just kind of become, like, become recognized, at least got the come up as what she deserved, and then she died. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was just tragic, you know, which is all kind of always the case. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, she'd always been kind of that, you know, question mark character, and then mm-hmm. she got hairspray, and then she was trying to get, like, parts on s- episodic television, like Married mm-hmm. with Children, and then mm-hmm. she died. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when she died, too. Not simply divine, you know, but... She well, uh, I'm sorry to say, but in the interest of time... Um, oh, I know. We can go on all day. But I mean, me, me and you both. <laughs> but you have any parting words you want to... Thank you for having me here. I really... Not this is, I've been me. wanting to do this. I know, I know. I just wanted to, to tell, the you, tell you. But what the I, I viewers. Just, the viewers. Oh, the viewers. Or anybody oh. out there you want to show? Yeah, I was basically, you know, if you're coming to San Francisco... <laughs> Um, they're not wearing flowers in their hair anymore. They're not. But um, they're tearing down buildings. They're tearing down buildings. It's it's genocide. It's cultural genocide taking place. Actually, oh, it, yes. it really is. It's cultural genocide taking place. And because I think that that just 
you might hear me out, just the last thing I want to say. Um, the, with the gay activist trope that is disappearing now, we've become a very centrist and, and, and middle, you know, middle of the road. It's become now um, aspiring to be just like everybody else. Well, now they're just as boring as everybody else. The gays have finally reached the level where they're just like they marry, they, they reach the equality with marriage. Great, now you can marry and get divorced like everyone else. It's, you don't have to join the military. That was always the, the special part about being gay, because you don't have to join the military, and you don't have to get married. And now, basically, you can join the military, and you can get married, and you're just as boring as everybody. So, I mean, it's like we just, it's like, where's the shtick? Where's the, you know, where's our special, oh where's the God. difference? Like, oh you know what I mean? Well, I don't want to be like everybody else. So, like, I just, if you're gay, <laughs> I don't know, just, it's not post-gay. I just, I don't know. I'm not going to have any, like, anything really profound to say, and, like, you know, I'm just, um, Respect San Francisco's history, you know, and honor the honor the what was there before. Really, and it's like, don't come down and tear down building. I mean, it, it really just honor what was there before, really, and just feel it. Just feel, you know, feel a sense of it when you're there. Feel what was there before, and just honor it, and be, you know, have show some respect. Really, anyway, thank you. Well, with that, <laughs> I certainly do appreciate my special guest. Michael, Th I mean, Thomas, Thomas Angelo. Thanks. So, yes, um, we'll be back here again next week. So with that, I'm out. George Bracey, Trans World. Good night.